You may have heard about new documents that have recently been obtained by East Idaho News and Fox 10 in the Daybell case. There are 2,500 pages. Most of them are email communications from Lori. Now, this information is slowly but surely being released. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first batch of information and I'm gonna do what I usually do and connect the dots. Some are pictures and some is info that is summed up. So we're gonna start on July 11th, 2019, the day that Charles Vallow was killed. And as we know, Charles Vallow was Lori's fourth husband. And we also know, or most of you know, that Lori was recently charged with conspiracy to commit murder in the murder of Charles Vallow. And we saw on body cam footage how Alex walked out of the house, he had a little boo-boo on his head, and it's been confirmed in recent documents that he did not administer CPR on Charles. And he also shot Charles twice, according to documents. And the second shot was while Charles was lying on the ground. And then, of course, we know later that night, Lori threw a big old pool party and it was reported that there were a lot of people and a lot of loud music. Now the next day on July 12th, Lori texts one of Charles's sons. She says in the text that their dad has died. Now these boys have been in Lori's life for 15 years, give or take, and you know a text according to Lori would suffice. And one of the sons asked how he died along with a series of other questions. And Lori doesn't say anything until much later and then Lori lies and says they're still waiting for the medical examiner report. Then Charles's ex-wife, who's also the mother of Charles's sons, finds out from the medical examiner website that Charles's death was actually classified as a homicide. And then she goes on Google and she looks for the news sources and found that Alex shot him. Then in and around the same day, Lori tries to file the claim on Charles's life insurance policy and finds out that no, it doesn't go to her, it's going to Kay Woodcock, Charles's sister. At around this time as well, after she finds out, she texts Kay and says, five kids and no money and his sister gets everything. Now the next day on July 13th, Lori responds to a text from Charles's son and says, I'm still waiting, working on arrangements and sorting things out the best I can. He then asks her, why won't you just say what happened? Now on July 14th, here's the new bit of info that was just released. Good old Alex decided three days after his brother-in-law was shot by him, that he would take a little vacay. So he flew from Phoenix to Columbia from July 14th to the 19th. Now, in the same documents that was released, the info said that it shows that Alex actually had wired money three times in the past to unidentified people between 2015 and 2018. And I remembered something about Columbia in the past with Alex. It wasn't the first time that he's actually been to Columbia, and I believe he went back in 2013, it had to do with a woman, and he was looking for a wife. If you remember that, let me know in the comments below. Now, that same day that Alex flew out to Columbia, Lori leaves a little voice message for one of Charles's sons. Have a little listen. And remember, this is three days after Charles died. Hello, I just wanted to talk to you and see how you're doing. And JJ wants to say hi. So just give me a call back and maybe we can talk for a few minutes. I love you, bye. So jovial, isn't she? Then on July 15th, Lori receives a text again from one of Charles's sons and says it's been three days and they haven't received answers as to how Charles died. He texted, the only information we have is that one text from you saying he passed away. You disappeared after that. We need any information you have. What happened? When did it happen? How did it happen? Where is he now? Are there any funeral plans and can, and this is redacted, and I be a part of this? This isn't a nonchalant topic you can just throw a text at and be done with it. He also asked later why he hadn't heard from Tylee or Colby and that Colby didn't respond to his text. Now on July 16th, I thought I'd throw this in here because I've been a little suspicious as to Melanie Boudreaux slash Pulowski's um, connection to Ian and that they only dated for 10 days before they you know, ended up getting hitched in Vegas. But on July 16th, Ian divorced his wife, and interestingly, Melanie uh, just split from her husband at the end of June. I believe it was the end of June, could have been the middle, but it was in June. 
Now, on July 18th, Melanie Gibbs sends an email to her followers asking if they would meet at Lori's house to hear David Warwick speak. Now, we know at the time David was Melanie's boyfriend. That meeting was set to occur on August 2nd. By the way, Chad was said to be at this event. And if Lori can have a pool party the day Charles gets killed, then certainly she can host another event right after. Here's what the email reads. Dear friends, August 2nd at 6 p.m. at Lori's home. I asked David Warwick if he would like to come down to Arizona to speak to us about some of his dreams about things that are coming upon our nation. David has been shown visions ever since he was 11 years old of future events. For some reason, the Lord has shown him the tribulations and the building of Zion for the second coming of the Lord. He loves to share with his brother and sisters because of his love for his fellow men. He shares humbly and loves to help others prepare for the Lord's coming. We will be having our class in Lori's home. I will be sending her address soon. Please let me know if you can come. We are looking forward to seeing you. I miss you guys. Please RSVP. Love you guys, Melanie Gibb. Then a couple days after that, on the 22nd, Lori tells JJ's school that Charles Vallow committed suicide. And by the way, JJ didn't know that Charles had died. She said he's away on business. Really special woman we got going on here, real keeper. Now we get to August. And the newest info that was revealed was on August 8th, it says Lori's sister-in-law, which I'm assuming Kay, but it didn't say that. It just said Lori's sister-in-law emailed detectives and told her what she believed about Lori and Alex killing Charles. And she also claims that Alex left two of Lori's dogs in the desert because Lori didn't want them anymore. And he killed another family member's dog when they didn't want it. So then the next day on August 9th, Kay sent a detective an email worried about JJ's well-being and asked for a welfare check. She was saying that Lori wasn't responding to text or calls since Lori found out that the life insurance had gone to Kay. Now on August 14th, the new info also states that Lori took screenshots on a computer that include a purchase of two wedding bands silver with green inlay. Now, the modification date did say on that photo was August 14th, 2019, which is very interesting because we know in October is when Lori bought the rings. But what happened was is the order had to be canceled because the creator of the rings said he was busy with school, so he had to cancel the order. Oh, and by the way, when this occurred, it was five days after Lori put the service dog up for sale, which by the way, most of us know that the trainer actually saw that ad with the dog for sale and said, yeah, no, you can't do that. And I'm gonna take him back, which he did. Now, around this time as well, was four days after the last communication that JJ had with Kay and Larry. I'm sensing an evil pattern here, aren't you? But wait, there's more. In September, there are now two new pictures that have surfaced of JJ. One was on September 14th and the other one was on September 22nd. Now on September 14th, this picture was taken on a ride at Yellowstone Bear World. It's a quick 12 minute drive from Rexburg and they call it a drive through wildlife park and also features a petting zoo and rides. As you can see, he's all alone on this ride. You wanna know why? Because five days before that, Tylee was murdered, burned, and dismembered. I can just imagine Lori thinking, everything's fine, everything's gonna be okay, and then making excuses and take them on rides and somehow thinking in her twisted mind that's gonna make up for his murdered and dismembered and burned sister. Plus, you know, she might need some mementos. Now on September 22nd at 10.46 a.m., this photo was taken of JJ in his red pajamas. Now, this is the day that Melanie Gibb and David Warwick were visiting Lori at her place in Rexburg. Alex had taken JJ over to his place and they later saw him come back and they had noted that JJ was asleep on Alex's shoulder and David and Lori and Melanie were doing a podcast. Then by the morning, JJ was nowhere to be found and Lori came up with some cockamamie story saying that JJ was getting unruly and jumped up on the counter and jumped up on the uh, cupboards and knocked a picture of Jesus down. The next day on the 23rd, Lori had two photos that show rifle ammo at a gun store in Idaho. And the timestamp wasn't revealed, but I'd sure love to know more about that little info snack. Now, in October on the 7th, new information came out and it says that Lori Googled 
how long it would take to drive from Rexburg to Independence, Missouri. And she also started looking for flights. Police say she got a text from Alex asking where she was. It says the messages were deleted but were recovered. Now Rexburg to Independence is almost an 18 hour drive. And I had mentioned Independence, Missouri in a couple of previous videos. I talked about Julie Rowe and her coded email and she talked about independence. And I had wondered if it was Independence Day, meaning July 4th, or Independence, meaning Independence, Missouri. Here's what she said in her coded voicemail. Just wanted to let you know, site security is on task and secure. We are on lockdown and um, just a matter of time before we're given the clear for Pathway to Heaven, Pathway to Zion, and Independence Day. So interesting here how Independence, Missouri is being searched by Lori. And I had mentioned that before, I wondered what was coming up. Now I'll put that video up here so you can take a look and see what I mean. It's an odd, bizarre voicemail. Now, the next day on October 8th, the newest info states that Lori booked a flight from Idaho to Phoenix at the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport in Arizona. One day before, Tammy had her first attempt made on her life. Lori booked the flight under the name Lori Ryan. It's not the first time that she's done that. And according to the documents, Lori apparently sent a text to Melanie Boudreaux that day. And police say through pictures and videos, it shows that Lori stayed with Melanie. Now the investigators also believe that Lori brought JJ's iPad to Arizona. Then I read something on East Idaho News that it said, would be interesting to see if it connected in Missouri between the 10th and the 12th. So I'm very curious about that. Now remember, Lori did several logins from JJ's iPad after he was gone and she connected to an app from his old school. You can also see that video right here. Then Tammy dies after the second attempt on October 19th and Lori flies back to Idaho from Arizona on the 20th. It makes you wonder though, I wonder, and I've said this in a member live stream, I wonder if Lori had a complete fit, like your wife, Chad is not dead yet, so guess what? You're not gonna get all of this. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to Arizona and you're gonna kill her and until you kill her, then I'm not coming back and you can't have a million dollars of this. That's what I think. You let me know what you think in the comments below because it's very interesting how she flew out the day before the attempt made on Tammy. That didn't work and now she's gonna hold herself back from Chad until it's done. And then miraculously, she comes back the day after Tammy dies. Then three days later, Tammy's memorial was happening. And there are timestamps of Lori in Hawaii on October 23rd, the same day. Now, about six or seven months ago, I had Annie Cushing on the show. She's Joseph Ryan's sister. And she said that there was a trip to Hawaii in October. We didn't know much about that at the time. She wasn't able to share at the time too much information. But now we see that Lori was in Hawaii on October 23rd. And I do remember her talking about Melanie being there as well, but she didn't say anything about the date. So I'm wondering if this is when Melanie Boudreaux at the time went to Hawaii with Lori just before she moved to Idaho. And two days after those Hawaiian photo timestamps, Melanie's apartment in Rexburg gets taken off the market and it gets leased out. Which leads us now to November. On November 5th, Lori and Chad tie the knot with their ukulele and their smirks in Hawaii, just a couple weeks after Tammy died. Chad lies to the family and says he met Lori on the beach. Then in the latest and newest info, Chad and Lori were at a Hawaiian temple on November 12th. That same day, Melanie trespasses on Brandon Boudreaux's family's property and she actually went there twice and the second time she was arrested and good old Uncle Alex came and uh, bailed her out. The 26th we know is the welfare check and then the newest info states that Lori was at a California residence in at La Miranda Bueno Park on November 29th to December 1st. Now remember on the 29th and 30th, Melanie Boudreaux became Melanie Pulowski and Alex Cox became, uh, well, Alex Pastenes because he married Zulema and took her last name. Now you can check out that video right here as well or in the description box below, I'll have them all there. And it's on Thanksgiving and that week and just how much BS there was and how much BS happened. 
in that time frame. Then on December 1st, Chad and Lori flew to Kauai from LAX. I'm looking forward to more information that comes out. This helps connect so many more dots, little by little. Uh, we've already covered, oh my gosh, we've covered over a hundred videos on this channel. So if you'd like to check it out, you can check out the playlist. I have one on Charles Separated as well, so you could see that. Uh, I did that a year ago. So there's a lot of justice coming and I believe there's going to be more. Let me know your thoughts below. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.